Hi everyone, this is Jeremiah, W9JAM, and today I'm going to show you how to actually apply the new Bluetooth update for your Anytone 878 radio. Now this file does work on the 578 as well, but you'll need to make sure that you actually set everything up on the 578 and that you have Bluetooth turned on on either the 878 or the 578 to be able to do this update. So first things first, we're going to turn on our Anytone 878. We're going to let that boot up. It'll say booting, please wait. And if you've got a custom screen, it'll show the custom screen. If it's the factory default screen, it'll be the Anytone logo. And if you've got just your name and call sign, it'll show that. Okay, so there we go. And what I'm going to do to make this easier to find it on my Android device is I'm actually going to go to Menu. Then I'm going to press Up to get to Bluetooth, select it. And I'm going to come down to Bluetooth Names, and I'm actually going to rename my radio. This is where you name what it's going to show up on any Bluetooth device that's trying to connect to the radio, like a cell phone or um, your computer. Even though those devices won't work with the radio, it'll still show the name of the radio on those devices. So I'm actually going to just name this my call sign and 878. So it's going to be W. Then I'm going to take and press the pound sign so it switches to numbers. Then the number 9, pound sign again and again to switch it back. Then J A M. Then I'm going to hit the star for a space. And then the pound sign again to switch to numbers up in the top corner there. And then 878. And then I'm going to press confirm. All right, BT name success. It goes back. I'm going to go up to BT on off. Make sure that is on. And then I'm going to go back to the main menu. And then I'm going to set my radio to the side. The next thing we need to do is actually extract the new 3.08 firmware. So let me switch to that screen. And here is the zip file. The zip file name may be a little bit different than what you see, but this is what I actually renamed it to. So I'm going to right click on it, click extract all, and then since I have multiple monitors it actually pops this window up on the other monitor, but this is what it's going to extract the folder to. So I'm going to click extract, and now we get this folder. I'm going to double click it to go into it, and then you see where it says BT Firmware V10046? We actually need to go in there and extract the two zip files that are in there. This is also where you're going to find the PDF file with the instructions on how to do the firmware update using an Android device. Again, you cannot use an Apple device for this. It only works with Android. So I'm going to right click on the first one, the B707 file. I'm going to click Extract All. and click Extract. And now we've got a folder up here. And in that folder, we have a bin file. To make this easier on myself, I'm just going to right click on it and click Copy. And then go back to the BT Firmware folder and then Paste. That way the bin file is in there. Then I'm going to go to this update tool.zip file and tell it to extract that as well. Click Extract. It's going to pull that up. We're going to be in an Update Tool folder and then another Update Tool folder. And there's the APK file for Android. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click Copy. And then go back to the BT Firmware folder by clicking right here and click Paste. So now I've got my APK file and my bin file. So what we need to do now is actually be able to get that onto the phone or your Android tablet. So as you can tell, I have a Google Pixel. And if I click on it, it's not showing anything up right here. So let's pull up the software that's going to let me share my screen with you real quick to show you how to do this. So bear with me just a moment here. Let me get that pulled up here. All right. And then on the phone, I have the Android Cast software on here. I'm just going to tell it to start casting. It's connecting. On my phone, it's going to ask me if I want to share the entire screen, so I'm going to click Share Screen. And then we can see what's on my phone. All right? 
Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag all the way down from the top, and I'm gonna click on the gear. That brings me into my settings, and I'm gonna do connected devices. Now we see it says USB charging this device. I'm gonna click on it, and then see where it says file transfer Android Auto? I'm gonna click that. It's gonna ask me to verify my identity either by my pin or my fingerprint. Once it verifies, it's going to switch. And now, if we go back and over to this window and click Pixel Pro, we see I have an internal shared storage uh, folder now. And I previously copied the files over, but for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the two files that are here. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get everything ready here. All right, so this is the root folder. This is where you have to copy both files to. If you copy them anywhere else, you may be able to install the APK file, but it's not gonna let you take and do the update because when you go into the uh, application, the ELET application, it's not going to load the bin file correctly, the firmware file for the Bluetooth. So now we know that I'm on drive M. Go to my 878 folder again. Go in here. Go to my Bluetooth firmware. And then I'm just going to press control on my keyboard. And then single left click on the bin file and the APK file. Then right click and click copy. Then I'll go back to the pixel. Click internal shared storage again. Click paste. It's going to copy them. And then on the phone itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the search bar. And I actually have files there already. And I'm going to click shared storage, internal shared storage. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down and see that green icon, the OTA new tool APK. I'm going to click on it. It's going to ask me if I want to install it. I'm going to click update. If you see anything asking for permissions to do that, go ahead and grant those permissions, okay? Now, if I go back out and go in here again, we see I've got OTA now. I can click on OTA, and then up at the top, we have two options, scannable and scan BR slash EDR. I'm going to click on scan BR slash EDR and see how we've got multiple devices listed here. I'm going to click on the W9JAM878. There's two of them, so we're going to try the first one. Then I'm going to click Bluetooth. And then on mine, it goes directly to the root folder. You may have to navigate back to your root folder. I'm going to click the bin file. I'm going to click upgrade. And it should start within a couple of seconds. And now it's connected via the Bluetooth, and it's upgrading the Bluetooth firmware on my 878. This is the same exact process for the 578. So once you have Bluetooth turned on and you verify what your Bluetooth name is from menu settings, or excuse me, menu Bluetooth on your radio and go to BT names or Bluetooth names, write down what the name is in there so you can find it on that list. So this is updating the radio right now. And once this is done, I'll get a banner across the bottom of the screen here that says upgrade successful, please reconnect. If you don't get that, it says upgrade failed, please try again, or something to that effect, go ahead and power cycle the radio, and then try the process again. Sometimes it takes two or three times for it to work, but it will work. So there's that. Just a moment here. And I don't know why I'm getting a Google Meet thing that keeps popping up, but that should not be popping up, because I thought Do Not Disturb turned that off. Guess not. The wonders of live broadcasting and recording, right? So we're almost done here. 96%, 97, 98, 99. And then right here, we're going to get that banner. Upgrade successful, please reconnect. At this point, go ahead and turn off your radio. Click disconnect from the phone. Turn off the radio. Turn it back on. And then we're going to verify that the version now says V10046 instead of 4.3 or 3.6 or 3.3, which are the prior versions. All right, so the radio is booted back up. So let me switch back to that screen so you guys can see it. Again, menu. I'm going to press up twice to go to Bluetooth. Hit select. 
and we're gonna make sure it's on. And then I'm gonna tell it to go back again. And then we're gonna go all the way up to settings. So I'm gonna press up to go to settings. And then device info. I'm gonna scroll down. We see I'm on firmware 3.08 N is already. And this is an 878 UV2 radio. How you can tell is the hardware version says 110 or 1.10. If it's 1.0 on your radio, that's going to be a version one or UV radio, okay? So I'm gonna keep scrolling down. And then we don't get to see the whole thing, but we do see that it says V11, or excuse me, 1004, and then what looks like is a six. The prior version is three or 36 or 33 instead of 46. So that means that it did go through and it has been applied. So hopefully that helps. Again, remember you have to copy the APK and the bin file to the root folder of your Android device for it to work. A lot of the errors that I see are people that copied it to the download folder or the documents folder on their Android device. And it's gotta be in the root folder. Once you've got that done, you shouldn't have any problem. I've tested this with Android 7 all the way up to Android 16, and it's worked. So, hope that helps. I'm Jeremiah, W9JM73.